Hello everyone, and welcome to another video about HAProxy. When you're using HAProxy, it's collecting a wealth of information. This includes the client's IP address and the path that they requested, the amount of data as it comes through, where requests are spending time in terms of the path between the client, the load balancer, and the backend server, and also if there was a problem, where along that path it happened. In this video, I wanna show you how when you're configuring HAProxy, how to set up logging. Here's what we'll cover. First, what you need to configure in HAProxy to enable logging, then how to configure our syslog, and then how to rotate your log files after they reach a certain age or size. I want to show you how messages get from HAProxy to a file. Oftentimes, if you've installed HAProxy using a package manager like apt, then this is all going to be set up for you, but it helps to visualize how it works. On modern Linux systems like Ubuntu and CentOS, you have systemd. Systemd includes a component called journal that provides a way for services to log messages. In the past, syslog was a daemon that performed that task. Syslog would listen on a Unix domain socket located at slash dev slash log, and applications or services could send their messages to that socket to be captured by syslog. Journal, to be backwards compatible, also listens at slash dev slash log, so whether you're using a newer system that has systemd or an older one that has only a syslog or our syslog capabilities, HAProxy can be configured to send its log messages to slash dev slash log. Once a message is in journal, you'll use our syslog to get messages back out and write them to a file. So journal becomes a staging ground or temporary buffer for messages until our syslog can process them. That way, HAProxy can write log messages at full speed and not have to wait for them to be written to disk. Okay, let's go ahead and set up HAProxy for logging. Edit your HAProxy configuration file and add a log directive to the global section. Its first parameter points to the Unix domain socket slash dev slash log. The second parameter, which I've set to local zero, is a syslog facility code. You can optionally add a third parameter, which sets a severity level, such as debug or info, but if you don't set one, HAProxy logs all messages. To apply this log directive to each of your proxies, add a log global directive to your default section. Our syslog is configured by configuration files found in the directory slash etsy slash rsyslog.d. If you installed HAProxy using a package manager, then a file called 49-hproxy.conf is probably already there. Inside, you'll see that configuration exists to write all HAProxy log messages to the file slash var slash log slash HAProxy.log. And that's really all there is to setting up our syslog. Now that you've configured both HAProxy and our syslog, you'll find your HAProxy.log file in the directory slash var slash log. There, open the file and you'll see recent transactions have been logged from HAProxy. Next, let's see how to use log rotate to avoid running out of disk space. Log rotate is a service that will compress old log files to make way for new messages. If you look in the directory slash etsy slash log rotate dot D, you'll probably see a file called HAProxy. Inside, the HAProxy.log file is set to be rotated and compressed daily. This is a simple configuration, but you'll find more examples in the log rotate documentation. That's it for this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to our channel for more.